Hi everyone, I'm John Radford for Radford Mathematics, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I live stream both my iPad screen that you see in the background there, as well as my webcam live onto YouTube. For that, I'll be using OBS. Now in terms of hardware, the two essential things you'll need to do this are one, an iPad like the one I have here, and two, a laptop or desktop computer. You'll also want to make sure that your iPad is connected to your computer via the cable, so USB-C or lightning cable, that came with your iPad when you bought it. That's all you have to do to connect the two. Once you've connected your iPad to your computer, then what you'll see in this video will provide you with everything you need to be ready to live stream onto YouTube. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is download OBS on our laptop or desktop computer. And for me to show you where and how to do that, let me move over to my browser. To download OBS, you want to go to obsproject.com. And OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. Now the good news is, it's completely free, and on top of that, it works whether you're using Windows, Mac, or Linux. Now, I work on a Mac, so to download OBS, I click on the Mac OS button right here, click on it, opens a new tab, and as you can see, it automatically downloads it. Once it's finished downloading, go ahead and install the software and open up OBS. Now, when you first launch OBS, you're likely to be faced with a screen looking something like the one you see here. That is, a completely blank or black screen. Now, the way OBS works is with scenes, and in fact, you'll see in the upper part of the screen here, we have something called Scene Collection. I like to think of these as templates. Now, to give you a bit of context, I'm a mathematics teacher, and these days I do a lot of live teaching on YouTube. And from one class to the next, I may use a different template. So, for example, there's one template where I have a virtual blackboard and my webcam, but there's another where I'm going to have my virtual blackboard, my graphical calculator, and my webcam. And to go from any one scene to the next, I simply click on Scene Collection and Select. As you can see at the bottom here, I have a couple of them ready. But now, I'm assuming this is the first one, so the first thing we need to do is we'll add the webcam. For that, I go to Sources right here on the screen, and I click on the plus icon. Next, to actually add my webcam, I go on the video capture device down here, and it's giving me the option to give it a name, so I'll go ahead and call it webcam, and I click on OK. Now that that's done, OBS is asking me which device is sending the input. So to tell it, I click on Device, and I go ahead and click on FaceTime HD. That's my webcam. I select it and press OK. And now you can see I'm right there on the screen. Now I tend to actually reduce this quite a bit, so I make it rather small just so my students can see me in the lower portion of the screen. So I'll move it right there. There we go. Now that I've got the webcam up and running, I want to add a microphone. If you don't have one, don't worry, you can always use the built-in one on your laptop or desktop. For my part though, I really like to use a mic, and the one I'm using right now is the Blue Yeti microphone. And if you're interested, you'll find a link towards it in the description of this video below. So to add that, again, I go under Sources, and I click on Plus. And at the very top here, I have Audio Input Capture. So I click on that. And again, it's asking me for a name. So I'll go ahead and call it Yeti, that's the name of the mic, and I click on OK. Again, it's asking me for the input device, or just device, so I click on that, and I can see it right away, it's the Yeti stereo microphone. So I click there, and I click on OK. Now you can see on the screen that it's picked up on my, on my mic, which is right next to me now, called Yeti, and you can see the audio, it's going into yellows, and what you really want to make sure of is it doesn't go too high there. So you can always reduce that a bit, like I'm doing right now, take a few decibels off, just to make sure that you're not going too high up there. Okay, Okay. now my webcam is set up, my mic is set up, and now what I want to do is add my iPad screen. For that, all I have to do is make sure that my iPad is connected to my laptop, which it is, you can see with this cord right here, that's the cord that came straight out of the box, so nothing to buy there. and all I do is click on the plus icon under Sources again, and once more I go for Video Capture Device, and I'll create a new name, so I'll just go ahead and call it iPad Pro, and I click on OK. Now it's asking me for the device again, 
So I go ahead and click on there, and you can see it's already seeing it. It's my John's iPad 2. That's my iPad right in front of me. So I click on that, and I click on OK. And there we go. You can now see that my iPad is right there on the screen. Now, what I like to do is actually make the iPad screen as big as possible. So I go ahead and click and drag the lower corners there, and I move it in such a way that I can see it properly, as best I possibly can. And in fact, I don't really care if my students don't see the lower dock of my iPad, because what I really want them to see is my virtual blackboard, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, notice that as I'm doing this, well, you can't really see me anymore. Not that that's a problem, but I want to make sure that all the things that I set up previously are still there. So let me just show you how I would do that. There we go. Just scaling things properly so that we can see everything. Now, each time I add a new input source, it's being layered on top of the previous. So technically, my iPad screen is currently hiding what we could see on my webcam. And so what I want to do right now is throw my iPad screen backwards a bit. In other words, I want to make sure that my webcam still appears. For that, I go to Sources. Right? I've got my webcam, my Yeti microphone, and my iPad down here, and I want to throw my iPad back. So I've selected iPad Pro, as you can see, and so what I want to do is bring that down a little bit so it appears underneath the webcam in this list. For that, all I have to do is click downwards a couple of times, and there we go. Now you can see my webcam again, and this is exactly what would appear on YouTube. Okay, we're pretty much set here. Everything we need is right here. We have the iPad screen, I've got the webcam set up, I've got my microphone. So we're pretty much ready to go onto YouTube. Before I do that though, let me just say that, let's say you're not interested in going live onto YouTube and you'd rather record the video and then perhaps upload it to YouTube. In which case, OBS allows you to do that as well. All you have to do, in the lower right hand corner of the screen, you would click on Start Recording and you're good to go. You could then launch any app you please and just start recording and recording your voice with it. Okay? That being said, let me move over to my laptop and I'll show you how I set things up in YouTube before I start to live stream. Okay, as you can see, I'm on my YouTube channel here and I've logged on with the right email address for that YouTube channel. And so here's how I go live. I start by clicking on YouTube Studio. Next, I press on the Go Live icon. And for this new live stream, I need to create a title. So for the sake of this video, I'll go ahead and call it OBS and iPad. And underneath that, I'm asked if I want to make this video public. Now that really depends if I want everyone on YouTube to be able to find my video as it's live, as well as if I want my subscribers to be notified that I'm currently going live. And if that's what you like, then do leave it as public. Alternatively though, I quite like to use unlisted. If I select unlisted, only people with the link to the video will actually be able to see the live session. Once I'm done with it, I then make it public for anyone else to see. The idea being to keep the live stream relatively private with my students. But I must say, at times I do like to make my live streams public so as many students out there as possible can join the live class. Next, we can add a description. I'll just leave that blank for now. And then we can select a category. I'll just leave it as education for now. And here's quite an important part to me. Rather than going live straight away, I like to schedule my live session. It's now just after quarter past four here, so I'll just schedule it for 4.20 p.m. That's fine by me. That should give me enough time. I scroll towards the bottom and I create stream. Now in the preview screen here, you can see that YouTube is asking me to connect the streaming software to start the preview. And for that, all I actually have to do is copy the stream key that we see here. And I could of course select it all and copy it, or I could just click on this copy button right there. That stream key is now on my clipboard, and with it, I go back to OBS. So I click on the OBS icon right there, and we can still, it's still there with my iPad waiting. And here's the important part. That stream key that we just copied, we need to insert it into the streaming settings of our OBS session. For that, we go in the lower right-hand corner of the screen here, and we click on Settings. Now, I select the second option in the left-hand column, that's the Stream option here, and here by default it has the last stream key I used, but here if I just select all of that, delete it, and I just paste the stream key I just copied from YouTube, and I'm happy with that, and click on OK. 
And now that that's done, I'm ready to stream. So I go ahead and click on Start Streaming. That's the top button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. I click on it, and we're pretty much good to go. And to convince you of that, let's go back to YouTube for a second. And in just a few seconds, you're going to be seeing the preview of my iPad screen in the preview box right there. And there it is. What we now see in the preview box is exactly what appears on my iPad as well as my webcam. Pretty cool. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to do a math lesson. Then perhaps I'd get things ready and I'd open up my Explain Everything app, which, by the way, if you're seeking to do online classes, it is an absolutely amazing app. And I'll add a link towards it in the description of this video down below. And if I launch it, it would look something like this. I quickly create a new video, blank canvas, and there we go. Now, it's worth pointing out that there's definitely a gap between the time at which I do things on my iPad and the time at which it actually appears on YouTube. And that's perfectly normal. There's always going to be a few seconds. But it does take a bit of getting used to. Now, still on YouTube, I'm quite happy with the way things look. The setup or preview looks perfectly fine to me. And so I'm ready to click on the Go Live button. So I click on that. I can see it's going live. And now I'm live. And so I could do my entire math class if I wanted to. So let's say I just wanted to show the formula for adding two fractions, a over b plus c over d, and I could write the result on the right-hand side here. And I could do that entire live class that way. And I should have said, but I'll say it now, one of the reasons why I like to schedule my live streams a few minutes ahead of time is so that I can share the link towards the video with my students beforehand. So for instance, Say I've created everything, all I have to do to share this video is click on the share button at the top and I can copy the link towards it right here. Then I can send it by email or any messaging service I use. Now to convince you that we are indeed live on YouTube, I've opened up a new tab and if I go to the video on YouTube, you can see everything right there. That's exactly what my students would see. So I can go ahead and write and in a few seconds that's going to appear on the screen as well. And there we have it. That's the whole idea behind live streaming on YouTube with my iPad and OBS. Once I'm done with the class or once you're done streaming what you wanted to live stream from your iPad, you go back to YouTube and you simply click on the end stream button at the upper right hand corner. So if I just click on end stream, it asks me if I'm sure and I am. So I click on end and we're done. Notice here that I can always edit this a bit in the studio, and I do quite like using that edit in studio button at times. In particular, if ever I'm waiting for my students to join the class at the beginning, there can sometimes be two, three minutes of us just sort of sitting there, in which case I would trim that off. For now, though, I'm just going to dismiss this, and I'll go back to OBS, so I click on the icon, and I click on Stop Streaming, and we're done. And so that's how I can live stream my iPad screen as well as my webcam directly onto YouTube using OBS. And hopefully this will help as many of you out there as possible to do the same. And if you feel that this video has helped you, please hit the like button, even subscribe. And of course, if you have any kind comments or just questions, do write them in the comment section down below. For now, though, that's it for this tutorial.